Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Alismatic Heroes by Japan Anime Games. It plays three to five players, takes about an hour to an hour and a half to play, and is for ages 12 and up. In Alismatic Heroes, you're basically going to be trying to accomplish a, a goal of gaining control of all these areas down below on a board. You'll be utilizing specific cards that will stay in your tableau, and there's five different colors. You're going to have yellow, green, blue, a white and red military power you'll be utilizing some of those cards for movement victory points as you place them down drawing additional cards which you'll need to do and of course the ability to play cards down with the dream power which is the yellow card here on your turn you'll be playing a card from your hand either face down or face up into your tableau and gaining specific abilities you're always going to keep the cards in your tableau and you're always going to be trying to place more and more cards down there and eventually the game is going to end with players is trying to have the board as best in their control as possible. If you can control the most spaces on the board for each of the different tiles and have the most Alice's in each of the different colors, you're going to score a lot of victory points in addition to any bonus Alice victory points you can gain. Whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game of Alismatic Heroes is the winner. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you what the game looks like and I will have it set up for three players and I'll give you an idea of how to play. So here we have Alismatic Heroes for three players. I went ahead and set it up as, so that each player is going to get one of each color of their their cards, you're gonna place it in front of them for their tableau. I'm playing with the Mad Hatter, the uh March Hare and of course the Cheshire Cat, my personal favorite, as well as we set up the board for three players. In this case there's going to be a one, two, three, two, one, but it gets bigger with more players. Additionally set up all the tokens you'll be utilizing throughout the game over here. We have the different ones for dream power, for attacking, and for mobility, and then these are victory point tokens you gain throughout the game as well as victory points at the end of the game. Additionally there is a round marker on the back of any of these little tiles here which you can go ahead and utilize. So in this case we're starting with round one and once we go all the way across to round 14, the game is going to end and we're going to tally up our points as well as any bonuses we get. Every player will additionally get five cards from the commoner deck here. On one side, it's going to be a commoner and on the other side, it will be a specific type of Alice. There are additional types of Alices, but there's also Alices of every different color. In general, as a rule, Alice's can only go on the spaces of their color, and each color is different. To begin the turn, you're simply going to pick a player to start, and let's go ahead and start with this guy here. Look at their Alice cards. There's going to be ranging from zero all the way up to eight, as you can see, with the different colors. You can place them face up on their color, provided you have enough dream power, and that's going to be based on the amount of cards on yellow. So, for instance, if you had an Alice card that costs two, you'd have to have two dream power, whether it be in tokens or uh, in card value, it doesn't matter in what or in what commodity, you can then place it down. So unfortunately we have no dream power right now, so I'd have to play a card down that costs zero, or I'd play a card face down as a commoner, and commoners count as wilds, and you can put them in any area that you so choose. Additionally, when you play a card down in these spaces, they give you certain effects and certain bonuses. So let's go ahead and begin. This first one, I'm gonna go ahead and play this green card, and I can play it face up because it costs zero, and I have zero dream power. And this specific one says that when Alice is played or revealed, I gain a green resource token. So I'm going to take a mobility token and place it over here. In green, it says it's mobility power. This amount determines the, uh, the amount of cards in this area here determines how many spaces away from one of your cities you can move. And you're going to want to move and attack. And in this instance, after you play a card down, you're limited to the number of cards you have in your hand, you're then going to be able to move a uh, space or spaces equal to this green. Uh, as well as then attack spaces. The uh, other rule is, as long as you have a character in a city, then you're able to basically place down, uh, uh, you, know, you can move to any space around it for free, you don't need mobility. And you start off at the very beginning of the game with players choosing a city space on the board in clockwise order, and then after they all do that, it will go in backwards clockwise order, meaning the last player will decide. So green picked here, uh, then, uh, sorry, purple picked here, then green picked here, and then the March Hare picked here. Then the March Hare got to go again, then it went back to the Hatter, and then it went back to the Cheshire Cat. Okay, so that went ahead and happened. We placed this here, we gained the resource token, we now have one that counts for green, and now we're going on to the next phase of the game. After placement, mobility phase, or the movement phase. In which case, based on your mobility and attack power, you can choose to attack locations. If you do not have enough attack power, you cannot attack a location, and if you do not have enough mobility power, you also can't move there. There is one rule to that, though. If, for instance, I am here and I want to go here, I would need to have three mobility and one attack power. Now, I have only one mobility and no attack power, so to go there is pretty much impossible. 
but I can choose to flip this card face down and now it is under attack. Meaning on my next turn, if I put another under attack token there, it will then turn into an attack token and that will secure my area. However, I might not want to do that. Instead, maybe I want to secure a location around me because it's free for mobility. In addition, I have the zeros here, which means I can choose those locations to control. So I'll go ahead and pick one of these locations. That's one mobility, but it's free. Uh, even if it wasn't free, I'd still have that one. And then zero, I satisfy that military objective. So I get this location. When you control a location, you're going to be able to gain tokens based on the amount of cards in that area. Unfortunately, right now for red, I do not have any, any cards in red, so I'm just gonna gain that area. But it's important at the end of the game to have as many spaces as possible in each of these locations. After that, this player is done. The next player is going to get a chance to go. Looking at their Alice's here, they've got uh, yellows, which are very, very useful. I'm gonna go ahead and put a yellow Alice right there. And it says, when you successfully invade a city, which are these purple spaces, gain one resource token of your choice. Excellent. I also get one dream power, which means on my next turn, I could play this guy down because I now have one dream power. So that is nice. I also get to do my maneuvering and of course attacking. So I'll look and let's go ahead and go for something more useful if possible. Here is it, I can go over here and I can secure this location and then going to gain one token because I have one character in yellow. If I had two, I would gain two. Now that's also a dream power I can utilize. So instead of playing this one now, I can spend this one resource and plus it with that and I can play this one down instead next turn. Pretty cool, right? March Hare is going to now go, and the March Hare is going to look at their hand as well, and they have quite a few things they can do. They've got a blue one here that they can go ahead and play. That's a draw power, so they will go ahead and do that, which says the amount of cards in this pile determines how many cards you can draw after invading a blue territory. So if we were to invade a blue territory with the March Hare, then we're going to be able to draw cards, which is useful because we only have a certain amount of cards in our hand. You know, once each round, you may swap any one of your resource tokens for any green resource token. That's pretty useful as well. And it's a static ability to last forever. Now let's go ahead and invade a space and let's actually invade a blue space. That is a free because we're we are already here and we also have zero attack power. So that secures that. And we get to draw one card because we have one blue card in that blue area. That gives us a free commoner card. Back to this player again. Now this player here, he's only got his four cards left and he can't play any of them because unfortunately I have two fours and eight and a two. So I will go ahead and play this guy face down on the yellow area. When I play a commoner face down, a common Alice, I get to draw a card from the deck so I don't ever run out of cards when I play cards face down, which can be very beneficial. And just before his turn starts, this will actually go to round two. So just remember that every single, after every single player takes a turn, it moves on from round to round. So we're on round two right now. Additionally, now I have one dream power, so my next turn, if I had a one in here, I could play it. I have a two, so maybe next round I'll place this face down, and then the next round I can play this one. But you're always trying to place Alice's face up to gain their abilities, right? All right, now we're actually going to go on to our uh, placement phase, still once again. Uh, let's go ahead and place it right here. That secures that location there. It's a free movement there, and it's also zero for attacking, which will score me one yellow for invading that yellow space, because I have a yellow character there. And then the next player is going to get to go. And it keeps going like that around and around. Player is going to control more and more areas throughout the game. And you're also going to be using Alice abilities. Let's go ahead and look at a couple Alice abilities. This one says, at the end of the game, gain two points for every three green spaces you control. So there's certain end of game bonuses. Flip this Alice to gain three resources. When you flip it face down, that is going to signify that it's not going to be worth anything at the end of the game as far as counting for victory points. So be aware of that. And, uh, if whenever you invade a white space and you have one, two, or three token uh, character cards here, you're going to gain points based on the number of cards in this one here. The only thing that is going to be important for green and red is when you want to move around. So for instance, just as a side note, if I was here and I wanted to go here, I would need to have two green cards and they could be face down or face up. And then I could have zero attack power. If I wanted to go here, one, two, I would need to have three attack power. So I need to have three cards in this location here. And then I can go, okay, one, two, uh, one, two. That's for my two there. And then uh, three attack power here, which then let me place one over here. Another thing to note too is you can never be attacked as long as the city that you are controlling is, a, is securing an area. So this, this can't be attacked because I have a person here. Any amount of characters up to the number here can be placed on this city. And players can be attacked from this space here because they do not have the control of the city. So you want to control cities so that way you can't lose your stuff. 
And any empty spaces can also be uh, placed down. You can occupy those spaces. And any spaces that are under attack can also be uh, removed as well. So for instance, let's say that this space was actually occupied with an under attack token. I could simply claim this on my turn and remove this token from that player, which is pretty deadly, right? Whenever you take a location owned by another player, so for instance, if it wasn't under attack and I had this character was here and I moved onto this location, this would get removed and the bonus I would get, which is to draw cards, would be halved. The same would go for the yellow, red, and green spaces. I would only get half the amount of tokens, as well as white for victory points. So just take note of that. And don't forget that you can place your character here, even if there already is one. So if he wanted to go here, he could go there, provided he had the movements and strength. Uh, so he needed to have, if he was here, he needed to go one, two, three, four, five movement and strength he could then go there because three people can go there which means whenever he places one over here this player can't attack that location the only ones that can be attacked are the ones that do not have a city around them so just be aware of that little fact as well another separate little aspect of the game is the, these black spaces these black spaces cannot be moved through and you can't claim them the only rule exception to that is if all the locations around them are claimed, then the person who has the most locations around that space can claim that location. It's going to give you the ability to secure more locations to gain control of the tiles. After all of the rounds, all 14 rounds have been completed, the game is going to end, and you're going to get points based on whatever you've acquired from the game, from the cards that you've played. And in addition, for each of these spaces here, you're also going to gain victory points. I have actually a little cheat sheet here that reminds me that each map tile that you control is going to give you six points and the next player who controls it would take second place would get three anybody else would get nothing and then in each card slot based on the number of alice's you have if you have the most you're going to score victory points for them so for instance uh, if i was the only person who had one alice here this was a face down one which does not count i would score one victory point for having that alice since nobody else has an alice there and the same would go for all of these finally you're going to get victory points for any bonus alice's that you have in on the field that are facing up they give you bonus points for the end of the game and that's pretty much how you play the game you can try and secure as much area on the board as you possibly can in alismatic heroes can you do it i certainly couldn't let's go ahead and talk about it for the extremely abridged version go ahead and think of it like this on your turn you'll place a card down into your tableau face up or face down if it's face down you draw a card if it's face up you don't you activate any abilities that trigger then you move on the board, if you can, to a location that you can attack, if you can, and secure that location. Your turn will then pass. Everyone will get a turn, then the round will be over and we'll move to the next round. After 14 rounds are done, you're going to tally up any bonus victory points you get. There are five specific locations. Yellow is going to let you play more cards down based on the number you have. Blue is going to let you draw if you invade those locations based on the number of cards you have there. Victory points will be done for white, just like blue, and then for green it's mobility and red it's attack. In order for green to work, you have to have cards on there as well as red, but there are locations that will let you go there regardless. And then if you ever decide to do under attack, as opposed to just putting your, your, your token face down on the board, you can flip it over with it as an under attack, and after two turns on that space you will gain control of that area. Secure as much as you can, right? That's basically how to play the game. It's very, very, very simple, but there's a lot of things to talk about in the game, and I hopefully gave you a good analogy of how to play it, maybe without having to read the rules too much. Uh, there's a lot of different Alice's too. Some cost eight, which is a tremendous amount, and you'll be needing to use tokens throughout the game, because as you invade spaces, you're gonna get those specific tokens based on how many cards you have there. With this red one, it says you can invade other players' spaces, even if they're connected to their cities. That is extremely, extremely powerful, because it removes basically a turn of their mobility away. So if I if I placed and then made a turn to move, you can then take away that space from me, which is dangerous. Then you have the ones, which are pretty simple. You can flip this Alice to gain two yellow tokens at the cost of not gaining victory points, potentially, at the end of the game for not having enough yellow Alices. And then they have the white ones, right? At the end of the game, gain two victory points for each three yellow spaces you control. Uh, white ones are generally going to give you victory points. In addition to whenever you control the locations that are white, you'll gain victory points. There is a lot of Alice's in this game, and you'll utilize them as best as you can. If you can't, commoners are the way to go, because that will give you a lot more of an idea of what things you can use. Uh, you know, if you don't have any yellow and you need dream power to start the game with, which you're going to need to do, I would suggest putting it in yellow. Additionally, don't forget you can mulligan the ribbon in the game. If you don't like your five cards, you can get rid of whatever you don't like and draw new cards. It's kind of important, especially if you do not like your hand. But overall, the game is beautiful. I really like Alice in Wonderland. It's a huge 
favorite theme of mine in many, many games. Whenever Alice is in there, I always play as Alice. And when I don't have that choice, I play as the Cheshire Cat. And in this case, everybody's an Alice and there's tons of Alices. So the Cheshire Cat is what I play with. All in all, it is a area control game but it has really unique aspects to it. This is gonna be a niche type of a game for different types of people because it's not directly attacking players for the most part, but it does have that in it. In fact, the Alice's you play down are likely going to mess with players more than when you attack them on the board most of the time because Alice's have a lot of different crazy abilities and they are effective based on whether you play them face up or face down. The board itself, if you're behind and you start using your attack, which the under attack, token, which I almost recommend not doing if you could possibly avoid it, because players can take that away from you and you don't want to lose any actions at all. You want to place as many as you possibly can. It makes you secure spaces. Just because you can play an Alice and you don't want to play a card face down doesn't mean you should, because sometimes it's not going to benefit you. You should wait, because those are the cards you have in your hand, and once they're gone, they're gone. You need to secure more cards by gathering blue spaces. However you want to do that is up to you, though, but definitely keep cards in your hand. Without cards, you're going to be in trouble, okay? Overall, Fun, really, really enjoyable. Like I said, if you like area control based games and you want something unique, something different that has some great artwork and plays really, really interestingly, this is one for you. For those of you guys who are expecting more of a tactical attacking battling style game, this is not going to be your cup of tea because it focuses more on the numbers in your tableau and how you orientate them and when you move on the board, how you move. It's all that deep thinking strategy without actually specifically going after your opponents. Now, of course, like I said, that's sort of true with characters like Demon Alice that changes the way the game plays completely and in which case you are basically messing with other players. The end of the game has some really interesting aspects too because you're basically trying to control each of the different areas and as players gather uh, knowledge in this game they're going to understand okay the next game I'm going to do much much better and so on and so forth. You get better and better with these type of games especially this one understanding how you score points and what the best route is. My only one I guess real critique in the game other than there's a specific player base for this is there are these Alice's that are called like basic Alice's and in general you can't play there's rules as to what type of Alice's you can play you can play multiples I think but you can only use one of them except for the original Alice but at the end of the game gain one point if you have the most Alice's this effect stacks I don't know if that means I don't know exactly what that means but otherwise overall a fun little game Alismatic Heroes definitely suggest it it's a three to five player game so you have to have at least three players for it but if you do definitely take a look at this game by Jap Anime Games really enjoyed it